quick uh, comment to the throwaway comments made by uh, Douglas Murray uh, about uh, Muslim women and Islam uh, uh, and its way it treats women and I think that uh, Muslim women are quite capable of speaking for themselves and I think the sort of <laughs> myths people like you put in the public arena and I've heard other similar arguments from BNP and all that kind of stuff they think it justifies their argument by saying well Islam treats 50% of its population in a really derogatory and whatever whatever way that you like to explain okay. it. Uh Hello welcome to my YouTube channel I hope you are feeling good today we are going to be checking out another video from Douglas Murray titled is hero feeling is Muslim Douglas Murray debate highlights wow i believe this is going to be an interesting one so let's start with the video go is douglas murray he's the director of the center for social cohesion here in britain which tries to promote integration between britain's ethnic minorities and the wider population and it specializes in radicalization so douglas murray your time starts now thank you uh, thank you very much. Uh, Tariq says that Europeans associate Islam with violence. There is some truth in that. There is also a very obvious reason for that, which is that Islam is associated with violence. It was not Buddhists who flew planes into the Twin Towers. It was not Hindus or Jews that blew up the London Underground buses a few years ago. And that simple fact has to be acknowledged if you're even going to start a dialogue. Now, the, what is happening Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a pantomime. I'd uh, argue that Europe has done not too badly, considering the circumstances. In the middle of the last century, there was, or there was an almost negligible Muslim presence in Europe. At the turn of the 21st, in Western Europe alone, there were 15 to 17 million Muslims. That's a very fast migration, ladies and gentlemen, one of the fastest in human history. And no society would find it easy to deal with that kind of migration. As it happens, uh, European societies, Western European societies, have, I think, dealt with this much better than some would. Certainly, Muslims coming to live in Britain and in Western Europe enjoy more rights and better rights among them freedom of worship than they do in any Islamic country in the earth here today. We do have a problem. We have a problem when the failures of Islam throughout the world, the failures of all Islamic societies, come here into Britain. Their intolerance of freedom of conscience their intolerance of apostates, their intolerance of freedom of expression and freedom uh, of speech, their intolerance of minorities, other religious minorities, sexual minorities, their intolerance of gays, their dislike and distrust of half of the population, women, and many, many other things. And the call, what's more, and the call, what's more, for a parallel legal system within Britain and European societies. This is monstrous. No other group behaves like this, asks for parallel laws. This is a fundamental problem, and it's one we're going to have to deal with. It's a problem between a society, Western Europe, that believes that laws are based on reason, and Islam that believes that they are based on revelation. Between these two ideas, I'm not sure there is very much compromise for Europe. It is not Europe that has let down its Muslims but the Muslims of Europe that have let down Europe. This is not solely something which we have to say we can never reconcile. Of course we can reconcile this, but we need to be honest about it. We need to be frank about it, and we cannot avoid things just because they are unpleasant. And if there were one thing I would wish Muslims in Europe could learn today, as fast as possible, it would be this, that you have no right in this society not to be offended. You have no right to say that because you don't like something, you can commit violence or you would like something to be stopped or censored. You have no right to have more hate laws or hate crime laws or hate speech laws just to defend Islam. You have to realize, the Muslims of Europe have to realize, that a society in which even your deepest feelings can be trodden upon is the only society worth living in. And the sooner we can learn that, the sooner that Islam can learn that within Europe, the better. It is not Europe that has failed its Muslims. It is Islam that has failed Europe. I'd argue Islam has failed its Muslims. Thank you. Um, I just had a question to Mr. Well, a few questions to Mr. Mari. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think it's the Muslims of Europe that have failed, Mus uh, that failed, sorry, the Muslims of Europe that have failed Europe. I think it's ex that exactly the opposite. Um, one of the things you said it was, um, yeah, it was actually a few Muslims, crazy Muslims, I think, who sort of flew the plane into those buildings. 
But was Hitler a Muslim by any chance? Because I'm not sure that Muslims had anything to do with the Holocaust. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen there. In 2009, the Centre for Muslim Studies, along with the Gallup poll, uh, interviewed 500 British Muslims. Over 99.5% of those British Muslims found homosexual acts unacceptable. What was interesting is that the government has given concession to Muslims as well as other religious organisations. So it seems to me, in fact, this government here is prepared to give religious organisations, including Muslims, the rights over lots of gay men and women. You talked about how Europe has dealt with this problem and what you basically have alluded to in the six minutes that you had are that Muslims are a problem. And you're from the organization called the Center for Social Cohesion. And it's worrying that to have you talk about these things in this manner. What you are basically alluding to is that Muslims are external to Europe and it's worrying that you see it that way because then that means there is no chance of there being any solution to any problem or Muslims being seen as a part of Europe and being seen as European okay. citizens. Thank you. Gentlemen, I just want to pick up uh, something that Douglas Murray said. I'd like to ask you, when you talk about the Muslims that are the problem, which Muslims are you talking about? Because you keep slipping in your language to focus on the radicals, the extremists. Okay, Maybe right. that's because that's what you're interested in. But there's another whole set of Muslims out there who are not like that. OK, just a quick clutch there. Um, it is sufficient to point out that Europe is not failing its Muslims, that this debate is taking place tonight and is being televised by the BBC World Service, that Tarek Ramadan holds a chair at Oxford University. I put it to you because of these very facts that you are being welcomed, that you are being integrated, that you are being respected. You are not a problem. OK, let's just take... All right, so let's hear some brief comments, please, and questions from our audience. OK, the lady there. Thank you. I have one question for the opposition, although most in this hall would agree that the uh, human rights that are um, accorded to all of our citizens, Muslim and non-Muslim, are greater than those in the Arab nations. Do you think that we have failed Muslims by allowing the language of Islam as against us to propagate on and on since... <clears throat> excuse me, particularly since 9-11, but even before that, and therefore allow our own Muslims within our own countries to feel as, they, as if they are part of the enemy rather than part of our own countries. Okay. Okay, I, I want to take very quick ones then. Okay, this lady here. Uh, I just want to make a quick uh, comment to the throwaway comments made by uh, Douglas Murray uh, about uh, Muslim women and Islam uh, uh, and its way it treats women. And I think that uh, Muslim women are quite capable of speaking for themselves. And I think the sort of <laughs> myths people like you put in the public arena, and I've heard other similar arguments from BNP and all that kind of stuff, they think it justifies their argument by saying, well, Islam treats 50% of its population in a really derogatory and whatever, whatever way that you like to explain okay. it. Okay. Um, oh, oh, you've got a mic. No, that gentleman there, is it? Yeah. Surely it's Islamic countries and nations and religion who are letting down many Muslims. The lack of correct investment in education, social justice and welfare in their own countries, which has caused so much social migration to Europe, which wouldn't have happened. But surely the, this lack of contribution to education and ability, especially of women, of freedom, has stopped this um, growing and contributing to Europe as much as they could. Let's just take this young lady here with, with the headscarf and then we'll come to our panel. Um, I'm a British female. I love this country and I give this country. Now you're calling me a problem. I don't think I am. I think you are. Um, second point is, um, as a Muslim female, okay, my parents might not let me go, go somewhere late at night because people are racist to me. They tell me to go back home and they hurt me. I got hit by two white guys and they laughed at me because I'm a scarfy, okay? Um, Last point is to Mr. Fleming, um, about the point where you said um, about the religion, change in religion, every person has a right to, no one says anything about that, but if you had a daughter or um, a son that wanted to become a Muslim, would you be happy about that? I don't think so. 
Douglas Murray. What would you say to that lady? Uh, no, of course it wouldn't bother me. I mean, I would hope that if somebody has access... Look, what Fleming and I are arguing for is that people have the right to access all of the kind of opinions, all of the knowledge that they can. That means, among other things, having, for instance, access to all of the criticism that should be written of the Quran and of Islam. And if they weigh up after knowing all of these things and having access to all of them, that they would like to become Muslim, I don't have a problem with that. All right. okay, I want to get some response to what we heard out, some of the comments our audience made. I'd just like to make uh, a comment on one of the cases that, uh, that uh, Petra made, uh, which was about uh, Ahmed uh, Abu Talib, a very distinguished uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, public figure in Holland. What you failed to mention when you mentioned him as a, as a great success story of the Netherlands, which I agree he is, is that after the murder of Ter van Gogh in 2004, uh, he had to go under 24-hour protection because his name was found on a hit list from a radical cell nearby. We cannot simply take, Petra, the terrific success stories and ignore things like that. It is no small thing that a Muslim politician who speaks out should be targeted for assassination in his home country of the Netherlands. And there are many and Muslims we... and Muslims. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, Tariq Ramadan, yes. we get the point, yeah? Well, Ramadan. Once again, I think that uh, you are taking one story and then it was building... The one no, it is, and many Muslims around the world and in the Netherlands were against that and yes. attacked the small groups that were saying this. And this is the case today in Europe. This, the discourse that you have, is helping to nurture this sense of alienation and to not to let the Muslim feel that they are at home. And out of the questions that we got from here, people are saying, you are welcome here and then in their own country. I'm sorry, I'm at home. I'm at home. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So, talk to me. I'm sorry. Talk, talk to us or talk to me as a fellow European and not as someone who is an outsider infiltrating the freedom of expression and using this. This is one. Can Let I, me finish. Can I come back to it? Yeah. No, I'm not saying you're not a European, but I would appreciate the following, yeah. which is that don't come to this hall and tell this hall that you're European, that you're a European, and go to another and talk to an Islamic audience as Islamic brothers, because that is what you have spent your career what, doing. What's wrong? Speaking... Speaking through. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. And Tarek comes here one day and says, we fellow Europeans, we all speak to each other as fellow Europeans. And another, he speaks from Muslim audience and says, we as Muslims. Which is it, Tarek? Which is it? I'm, I'm a Muslim. You can't pretend you have two identities. Come just you know, say you know what? Can I say something about But you are, you are my... Okay, you two, just a minute. We, we get your point. Let's Douglas, I want to ask you, you heard some of the people from the floor there, the woman complaining about attacks on her because she's described as a scarfy because she wears a head veil. I mean, that is something that you would regret. I mean, that doesn't promote social course, nobody, cohesion, nobody, does it? Nobody thinks that any physical attacks or any such thing could be, could be uh, 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 a good thing to happen. Of course not. Of course, there are. Let's not. But let's not. Let's make sure. Let's make sure we're talking about prejudice. Prejudice though. exists in society. Let's just be absolutely clear this is an old audience. Prejudice undoubtedly exists in this society. It exists across racial groups, including from minorities to other minorities, after all, which is one of the things we see increasingly in Britain these days. And it is also the case that people, in particularly famously lower socioeconomic groups, are likely to feel hatred for other groups. That is one of the things that has to be tackled, and everyone, I think, in this hall, I'm sure, we're in agreement that that should be tackled. But do not mix up somebody, a thug, a racist, and so on attacking somebody in the street with the right of Fleming and me to say what we see in the Quran, what we think of Muhammad, and maybe even asserting our right to say so. OK, all right. Now... Um, my name's Henry Hogger. I'm a former British diplomat in the Arab world. I worked until uh, fairly recently for something called the Muslim West Facts Project, which uh, is an exercise to publicise the findings of a, a, some Gallup polling on Muslim opinion in Europe. One of the most striking features in that, I think, is that um, in Britain, France, and Germany, that uh, Muslims, when asked for their, uh, f how strongly they feel attached to the country that they live in, on the whole, gave stronger answers of loyalty than did the public as a whole, a sample of the public as a whole in those three countries. It seems to me that that's a strong and positive reason for arguing against the motion that uh, uh, Europe is failing its Muslims, but not the reasons which I fear our uh, speakers against the motion have been giving, which rather inclined to blame Islam and Muslims themselves for the problem.
Thank you. Please. The gentleman behind you. I'll come to you in a second. I do a lot of work with uh, Christians who've come out from the Middle East, sometimes due to uh, persecution, and British policy is frequently behind that. So the world is very complicated. But what worries me is that a lot of the things that people are worried about, about, about Muslim immigrants into Europe, um, are very hard attitudes that a lot of the Christians also have. And I think if you are, for instance, from a gay minority in, um, in a lot of those communities, it is very, very worrying. And therefore we need to be thinking um, slightly bigger than just this Muslim thing, but it is about a, a wider cultural problem. Right, okay. The lady now wearing the hat. Just that comment to you, what you said about women, I think, first of all, that's really misleading because you're getting culture confused with religion. And if you just take a moment to look into the Quran, you'll see the Quran gave women rights long before women in Europe started burning brass for their own rights. And you'll also see that actually in the Quran, it encourages women to seek education, it protects us from violence, and it actually gives us rights in marriage. Right, okay. So you're very wrong. We, um, can I go upstairs? Yeah. I'm Oliver Cam. I'm a leader writer for The Times. Uh, immediately after the Swiss vote to ban construction of minarets, my newspaper published a leading article condemning the vote as inflammatory and a violation of religious liberty. But beyond religious liberty, beyond your sir, right to freedom of association and worship, I cannot understand what possible claim your deeply held religious beliefs have on the rest of society. They are, in my judgment, flawed and incoherent and wrong. Why do I have any reason to respect them, and why do they belong in civic society? Okay. Just some brief ones now. Yeah. I was uh, brought up a Catholic uh, in Ireland. Later on in life, I moved to England and I converted to Islam. Did my testimony of faith, and I was ostracized by a lot of my friends. As a practicing Muslim, it was 2003. A few years later, I came out as gay, and I was ostracized by a lot of my Muslim peers. And, I, and then I became very isolated, and I was lonely. I didn't know where I was. And I think the question today really is: It isn't is Europe, uh, you know, is a feeling it's Muslims, but are we all feeling one another? And that's something that we should really look at. And I'm now in love with a lovely Muslim man and a good relationship. So thanks very much. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm just a human being. I don't represent any sort of party or community or anything like that. I respect all religions. And as far as I'm concerned, they've always shown respect for me. And I don't think that it's fair that we should judge an entire religion by a few fringe people. Because if you count the Muslim community, it's humongous. You know, you can't just say, right, right terrorism, that's it. that's it. Douglas Murray, director of the Centre for Social Cohesion, a think tank which studies radicalisation and extremism in Britain. Um, your closing statement. Thank you. Well, first of all, just to um, pick up on a couple of people, particularly women, who've said about the terrific things that Islam gives women in terms of rights. The first thing is, yes, in 7th century Arabia, some of this was progressive. In 21st century Britain, it is not. And you have to make that fundamental admission that the Quran is not a document for women's rights in Europe in 2010. It is not. <laughs> secondly, secondly, why is it that only Islamic societies and mosques in this country are places which teach and preach hatred of other minorities? Every single week in this country, every single week in this country, every single week in this country, there are people on campuses who teach the murder of minorities. Last week, it was, a, it was somebody who calls for the murder of apostates. The week before, at another university, it was somebody who believes the Jews are fair game. This is not tolerable. It is not tolerable for Muslims. It is not tolerable from anyone else. You, I hope, would agree with me that any minority that engaged in such hatred and bigotry should be criticised. Don't pretend that the cloak of Islam and Islamic belief and religious fervor means that people like us cannot say that people who call for the murder of minorities are not mainstream, okay. are not acceptable, and have to be critiqued. Right. Well, <laughs> Against the motion, 346. 346.
And the don't, the don't knows have gone from 218 to 84. So Europe is failing its Muslims against have won Douglas Murray and Fleming Rose. Congratulations to you. Wow. Wow. What an interesting uh, debate. You can tell just by the title, is Europe failing its Muslim? Douglas Murray debate highlights. Wow. Based on the fact uh, Douglas Murray has given, based on the point he has given, to prove his fact that it's not Europe who is failing its Muslim, but it's Islam that is failing its Muslim. Douglas Murray gave some points, which I believe uh, I totally agree with him to some extent, just like what he say, living in a society, you don't have the right not to be offended. And when you feel offended because someone is trying to express his freedom of speech, that you don't have to resort to violence. There are better ways to uh, be able to address such issue. If someone says something and you are not okay with it, you can engage in a dialogue with a person and try to prove your point instead of you engaging in violence. That's the point Douglas Murray is trying to prove in this video. Douglas Murray also uh, made us understand that there are a lot of violent verses uh, in, the, in, in, in Islam. There are a lot of violent verses in Islam that a lot of Muslims are trying to emulate those verses and at the end of the day, they tend to be radical. That's why I believe Douglas Murray always talk about uh, Islam, Islam fundamentalists and Islam extremism that they tend to be offended when people try to express their freedom of speech that it's not supposed to be so. You don't have to resort to violence because you felt someone say something that you shouldn't have said. Because I believe if someone says something and you are not okay with it, instead of you fighting with a person, instead of you resorting to violence or trying to harm the person, there are better ways to address such issues. You should rather engage in a dialogue with the person and try to uh, express your grievance. I believe the person will get your point and at the end of the day, you can come to an understanding. There is no society that is going to accept violence. I believe that's the point Douglas Murray is trying to uh, is trying to prove in this video. I know I, for one, there, there are a lot of Muslims. I won't say Muslims are violent. There are a lot of Muslims that have that have that have come across that are very peaceful, that they are not violent in nature. So I'm not going to generalize it that Muslims are violent. That means I, I'm, I'm committing a fallacy. That that is going to be a fallacy because it's not true. Because it's not true. I believe there are a lot of peaceful Muslims, and there are also uh some Muslims, few which which are very few in number, that have you know tried to use the Quran, try to use Islam. To justify their action by being radical, by being extremists, I believe that's one of uh, the points Douglas Murray is trying to make us understand that there are a lot of Muslims, a lot of Muslims that have migrated from other countries and decide to, you know, uh, settle down in uh, in UK, and at the end of the day, they tend to be offended, you know, British. Even UK as a country has its own identity. And I believe British identity, UK's identity is embodied uh, in British culture, is embodied in British tradition, is embodied in British value system. So you coming to live uh, uh, in, in, in Europe, coming to live in UK, the first thing you have to do is to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate uh, the people's culture, to accommodate uh, the people's the people's tradition to accommodate the people's value system. You don't have to come to a country and try to impose your own culture or try to impose your own tradition or try to impose your own value system on the people. You have to, you have to accept the people's culture. You have to accept the people's value system. And we all know that in, in, in UK that uh, the, uh, free, everyone has the freedom of speech. Everyone has the freedom of expression. Everyone has the freedom to practice whichever religion you want to practice. Everyone has 
uh, the freedom to practice their own culture. But that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you should take advantage of that. And I believe if you be if uh, there's some uh, uh, there's some clause in your religion or in your culture that that is totally against uh, British culture, Brit British religion, uh, British value system, you should be able to adjust that so you can integrate in order to be able to accept British culture, accept British tradition, accept British value system. And, you know, a lot of Muslims tend to uh, believe that in UK, I don't know how true this is, it, how, how true this is, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of Muslims believe that uh, in UK, in Europe, in British, that they 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 give the Christian uh, 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 favoritism over the Muslim, that they give the Jews favoritism over the uh, uh, the Muslims. They believe that the Jews have their own have their own uh, courts. The Jews have their own police station. The Jews have their own uh, culture. But when the Muslim tend to uh, come and request for same thing the Jews have. They tend to uh, believe the, the, the Muslim are being uh, extreme, that they are that, that the Muslim are trying to uh, take over take over UK, that the Muslim are being radical, but the Jews also have the same thing. Uh, the Jews also have the same thing. Because I, I watched a video where Douglas Murray uh, debated some uh, Islamic scholar, and I believe the points the Islamic scholar gave is that they tend to uh, believe Muslims are radical. They tend to believe that a lot of Muslims are violent, but that is not true. And it was proposing that Sharia law should be legislated uh, in the UK. And the point he gave to back his argument was that he believed the Jews have their own uh, courts. The Jews have their own court in UK. The Jews, uh, 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 the Jews have their own culture in UK. Why is it that uh, the government is preventing uh, the Muslims from having their own courts, from as, having their own Sharia law? Why is it that the government is totally against the Muslim? That they tend to believe that the Muslims are being radical only because the Muslims are trying to demand for what they believe will be best for them. And I don't know about that. I don't know how true that is. But from the point Douglas Murray have, have proven is that when you are coming to uh, another man's country, you are coming to reside in a country that is not your country, the first thing you have to do is for you to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate the people's culture, accommodate the people's tradition, accommodate uh, the people's value system. You don't have to come into a country and try to impose your own culture and try to impose your own tradition and try to impose your own belief on the people. You are the one coming to uh, uh, coming to a different country. So you have to accept the culture. You have to accept the tradition. You have to accept uh, the value system of the country. Wow. I really learned a lot just by listening to uh, uh, the questions that we're asking and also by listening to Douglas Murray. I would also like to hear your own opinion on this topic. Do you think uh, it's Europe that has failed as Muslim or do you think it's Islam that has failed as Muslim? Keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Oh,